Hey guys, and welcome to the Art Show Week 7. Um, I'm Simon. Normally there's Tim here, but he's not here this week. Uh, his wife is uh, due to have a baby any tick of the clock right now. So um, he was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to make the stream this week. And I'm like, it's cool. I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll manage through for you and, and uh, just uh, help Tim out. Um, so this week, um, because Tim's not here, we'll just do like a few different things. Um, or probably a few less things. <laughs> um, uh, but what we will do is um, hopefully pretty cool. So I'm going to try and get through like a whole bunch of uh, critiques of um, students' work um, or shouldn't or say students, just people's work in case people aren't there aren't a student. And um, the other thing I'll be doing is like a color demo. So um, a lot of like students, people starting out are always asking kind of like, you know, how you get into color sketching and things like that. So um, we might just get in and do like color painting and kind of uh, uh, check check that out. So um, also like um, uh, I haven't necessarily planned like a discussion topic um, because there's no one to discuss it with here apart from you guys on the chat. So if you've got anything you want to talk about, I'm more than happy to digress and go down the rabbit hole of chatting about some some stuff with you guys if, you, if you've got any kind of questions or things you'd like to talk about. Um, so yeah, so you know, in the next couple of minutes or so, you know, post up any questions and um, and that'd be great. The other like cool piece of news is next week we've got another guest. Um, so a couple of weeks ago we had Tyler Bartley on the show. Um, next week we've got Peter Yong uh, on the show and um, he's currently been working on um, some like DreamWorks uh, TV shows like storyboarding them. So lots of the ones you see on Netflix. Um, so it's pretty awesome to have uh, um, someone like Pete in for the chat and kind of you know we'll be going over a whole bunch of things just like we did with Tyler so make sure you kind of uh, you kind of check that out so um, um, yes yeah, so yeah I'll, I'll be doing all the talking this week that's right guys so um, yeah I'll, Tim won't be able to shut me up right oh okay or, or I'll just have a, a, a sore throat by the end of the night <laughs> Either way, we'll see how we go. Um, all right, so I think like for right now, while you guys are coming up with your questions, right, is like let's just maybe jump straight into giving some feedbacks and kind of you know get through that, and um, you know then we can talk about some other things. So I don't really have anything kind of like planned with this stuff, other than just you know there, there's been like a few people with submitting stuff over the last few weeks. Um, and there, there might have been a few that we didn't go over. So I was thinking this week could use that opportunity to kind of just like jump in and go over like a whole bunch of things. Um, might not necessarily do heaps of painting on top of, but um, just trying to give you guys some notes of things you can, you know, improve and look at and, and stuff like that. So um, let's um, let's just start off here by looking at um, uh, Xavier's um, piece here. Um, so... I know Xavier was talking about doing um, sort of like a Drew Struzan style uh, um, style um, image for things. And, you know, I'll start out by I have some experience with this type of thing. <laughs> uh, I'll show you like this is something that I worked on um, not too long ago. was putting together this uh, this cover for um, the Star Wars Lego game so obviously I uh, have a bit of uh, have a bit of knowledge of how difficult these things can be and believe me that difficult you know something like this took many many hours of of collaboration and working uh, with you know different people on different things and and you know sending stuff off to you know um, other people for approval, different clients and things like that. So when you're working on a project like this, there's a lot of people that need to approve things. So it'll be like, move this two pixels, move this three pixels, make this, you know, um, this color and blah, 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 all those things, right? And if we look at, you know, one of the references that I was given for that, it was the Star Wars, you know, um, Star, Star Wars, you know, uh, movie poster this one so obviously like it, it's built around um, you know it, it's built around this poster right so so Xavier looking at doing you know these types of things with these kinds of posters yeah so one of the big things that I that I noticed straight away um, about your Xavier is um, that essentially what's going on is that you kind of have three 
elements in there, well, three major elements, which are the three kind of faces, right? So we've got, um, we've basically got this one, you know, and this one, and this one. And and one of the, the main things is that there's kind of no hierarchy at the moment of, of those shapes, right? They're all quite even. Uh, I wouldn't say one is more, you know, uh, it, it, it is more um, is kind of like bigger than the other you know they're all kind of quite similar so that's what you kind of want to do is get that hierarchy of things so if we look back at the reference you can kind of see that they're, they've always kind of got a bit of a you know we've got kind of like our big medium and small and things like that and and there's different there's different ways of doing it and there's certainly ways that you know it works better than than others that's for sure um, and and so that's what I kind of say is just um, trying to maybe change up the elements a little bit so um, and basically you can just think about you know like how how these sort of like shapes could kind of fit together so that the shape is an interesting like design by itself right so there's all sorts of way that you can basically put um, kind of like three um, three circles together right so you know how do you kind of want to do that you know and how's a nice interesting way to, to to do so so you know you might you know maybe we could think of these as like triangles or we can think of these as like you know as circles but basically you you probably want to have like a bit of overlap and you want to have maybe like a one two three big medium small that kind of stuff really starting to create a hierarchy and one of the things you like might say is that um is that uh they're all three are the same, um, like major characters, right? But I, I don't necessarily think that matters. Is like you can kind of pull focus around, you know. However, but that's the main thing that you're probably finding difficult at the moment is just that these three are kind of all competing with each other. There's no, there's no kind of like major versus minor going on, right? And that that's one of the things that you really want to do. And something else that's you know really tricky with these things is kind of the perspectives that stuff are at so like as in one of the things you might want to do with this guy here is um he kind of is you know is maybe have him sort of like looking up a little bit more so we kind of see a bit more of the you know looking up at his face and and this one could be a bit more front on and i'd maybe try and raise the face up of this one a little bit right because it's kind of making you just look down here so the the other nice thing with these posters is you kind of want to have um it, i think it's good to really get you know um some of the characters like kind of looking at us i think that's something that can help a little bit um it's interesting if i look at these you know they're not they're not all doing that you know this is is this i can't remember if this is a struzen one yeah there you go by drew struzen all right this one's great so like I feel like you know some of those characters are really connecting with us you know not all of them right but but some of them are where I feel like all of these ones are kind of like do none of them are kind of connecting with us right so you want to have some of that going on so you know maybe this guy here is the one you kind of want to have looking up and at us and things and then the other thing you probably want to do in this Xavier is just really think about the values that you got going on so if I change this to like black and white right is in this section kind of like let's do another layer on top you know in this kind of section down here is everything see how everything's getting a bit mush when i get it into black and white you know you're really trying to want to try and like work on those overlaps or try and work on you know how you're going to sort of like transition that stuff together so once again i just go back to the to the references that you want to do and you see how they're doing some sneaky little things here where they kind of like fade fade this off towards the bottom and then have these guys kind of like popping out over and things like that so I'd just be looking at you know like how other people are doing you know those um you know putting these things together so that they feel like the elements are popping all right so in this one here you can see like some silhouetted kind of stuff um let's kind of open these these guys up a little bit bigger where was the other yeah this one because these ones are pretty cool see like in here he's kind of like the the values are softer behind you know like kind of the, this this character in the foreground here 
and then adding a lot of contrast to really kind of make that pop and then there's some kind of fun little things down here where there's some silhouetted elements and things like that right and once again you know really making sure these silhouettes are popping out nicely right um, once again in here just making sure you can see how this kind of like fades off into this abstract um, you know kind of uh, orangey you know effectsy thing here but what it does is really give a nice area where you can really start popping those silhouettes again like his hand is kind of like faded off into the background a bit so there's some things that you kind of do to really like make these foreground elements kind of read um, and it might be good if there was some other bits here you know aside from the mountain like there's some other stuff going on so there's some things that you could try and do, right? This is really tricky. Um, it's very complicated once you start trying to do these like kind of movie posters with lots of stuff going on. And, um, you know, and it's so tricky because you, there's so many things to think about, right? So I think you've done a, I think you've done a good job. Um, they're just some things that you could use to kind of like, yeah, make it a little bit easier for yourself. All right. So if you do have any questions, um, just let me know because I can see that you're in the chat, Xavier. Um, awesome. I'll, I'll like kind of move on to something else. Um, but yeah, if you, if you do have some questions, let me know. Um, all right. Now this is, um, this is a piece from, um, Alexandra and just saying it's kind of like an unfinished, um, piece, but just like a critique. So, um, some of the things that um, you could, uh, f firstly, like I think, I think it's really cool. Uh, Alexandra, I think that um, you've got some, you know, really um, interesting. Um, okay, <laughs> I'm just reading the chat at the same time as talking and painting and critiquing. Oh, too many things going on. All right, so um, Alexandra, there's some really good stuff going on with the with the line work and things like that, and kind of how how you're stylizing things there. I think it's great. Um, you know, the main things like kind of drawing wise is just, you know, really um, making sure of your structure, you know. So um, I think some of the things are working, you know, pretty well, but I'd really like one of the things that, you know, you could work on here is kind of the mouth, you know, just how the lips are kind of working and stuff is a, is a little bit crazy. Um, so you might just want to kind of like tone some of those things down and with the feathers and things here you still want to kind of like get the basis of you know some form into these things and i'd really look up some reference for you know kind of like our our feathers um you know things like that i was like um you know big sort of birds of prey um to to work on those those things um and you know just you could get some more kind of like details and things into these you know into these areas and when you're getting in the detail that's a really great way to help like kind of describe some of those forms that are happening so and and certainly like in this area here and things you be doing that maybe there could be something like you know it's got a very quick transition where it's you know secretly hidden by this this singlet here so maybe there could be some elements where it kind of you know we can see a bit of like skin through here and stuff and you could have some bits where it's sort of skin and like transitioning down you know and that could help with kind of the patterning that you that you're doing there and stuff um look at a lot of things in nature for how things uh transition all right so um let's have a look at like um so like uh crocodiles crocodiles or alligators or you know turtles um uh anything kind of like that so this is this is great so can you see how like let's um copy image and just paste in here shrink this down a bit all right and basically like the things you want to be kind of looking at is like see how these like elements of the texture and stuff and pattern you know kind of like wrap around the form and really describe things and then also what happens is all all these bits kind of like um uh they they kind of like transition into each other right so we've got kind of these sections and then they get bigger and bigger and kind of like down here and stuff and then you've got how do these like these kind of really chunky you know kind of dried sort of you know scale textures transition into these things up here and what happens is everything looks um part of the whole right 
and but it's the way that these things transition into each other so there's some kind of like things that you could think about so maybe with this you know you could look at like i said birds of prey you know like vultures owls all those things and think about how can i use some of those details to like kind of transition around so yeah they, they, they could be some things that you could do hey guys what's going on i can see lots of people you know saying hello in the chat hi <laughs> all right so um if, if you know maybe some of you guys have just joined the stream uh this week there's no tim uh if you've got any questions for us just um for us for me um just let me know okay in the chat and i'm more than happy to you know digress and talk about some other things all right um so going back to this one alexandra yeah just working on those transitions maybe like this color of the um of the like kind of uh patterning that you're putting on the neck and the face that could be similar to what's on the, the feathers and stuff so let's maybe even just have a quick look at the reference like our feathers because i i kind of think that you know sometimes they have that kind of like orangey kind of patterning to them um mm, uh, all right let's have a look see if there's anything all right just having a look here look at all this awesome reference uh mm -mm. What do we got? Got some crazy things going on there. Some little owls. <laughs> owls without feathers. Alright, that's not that useful. What else? Yeah, this 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 one's kind of cool. This is what I was thinking about. Let's just throw this up in here. Here we go. This is this is some better reference, alright? For kind of like colours and ideas for what is what it is that you want to do. Right? Oh, look at this dude here. It's crazy. His is a character by himself. So uh let's have a look. Let's just kind of I'm just gonna do a bit of this here. And this is definitely for all you guys, you know, getting into these things, just thinking about how, how to use a reference. You know, and you can see that we can start pulling, you know, some of these colors and these um, these colors and these patterns that are happening, you know, in here into this kind of reference to really like tie things together. So, you know, think about like how those feathers connect in, maybe, you know, how some of these like details and things work, like up into the face here and down onto the neck, you know, how you can kind of add that stuff there and kind of work it into the work it into the arms and things like that. So that's that's mostly what I'd say is you could work on like you know those kind of transitions and just looking at the references um, that you would like to to use for this and, and you're trying to really push those like kind of material and texture texture indications into the image right and just working on like kind of those lips and how you just describing the eyes and things like that but I think overall like um, it's really cool all right so hopefully that's a few little tips that will help you uh, help you along on, on, on getting some um, getting some of this stuff done all right now um so we've got an image here from jed um doing a, a doom character um and i think uh, i'm just going to scroll down here on facebook so i can see what jed says um just like some advice on my on my character um so firstly what i'd say jed is um i think it's pretty cool right like i think in terms of like the the kind of like drawing and the overall like image and stuff um it looks it looks really cool um yeah no problems at all um i'm assuming that's alexandra <laughs> so yep oh this my mic is breaking here okay and so i would say like yeah it's it's looking really cool like the palette's good and things like that um now i'm because this is for like the doom character class is my first thing that i would say to you jed is like it, he doesn't look that scary right and i think that possibly the thing that's making him look not that scary is that he has crutches 
Um, <laughs> I think that may, you know, like, I don't know. I just don't imagine, like, I just don't imagine that thing like walking at me, right? And kind of, I'll just be like, you probably start laughing <laughs> rather than being, rather than being scared. Maybe be scared and then start laughing. Yeah. But, um, and it's not to say that like it's, the image is working, right? But th there's those like kind of like story things that I think it just, it's okay, but maybe it's just like not as, doesn't have as much impact as what it could have. Um, yeah, and, and I would say, you know, just, um, I would, you know, look at references for things. Certainly like at the moment, you know, and I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but there's lots of, there's lots of kind of, you know, undead zombie stuff going on in like Zam Game of Thrones and things, you know, look at like Walking Dead, stuff like that for like how, how they're kind of like, um, stylizing things right because it's what they're doing is that you know they're kind of taking a person then you know turning him to into a zombie and kind of stylizing those those um those elements of of the character so one of the things that i would kind of like you should think about is that you kind of got like a person and then kind of a skeleton and his you know like his kind of skinny and stuff but then not you know, like there's a bit of a mix of things going going on. <laughs> Cripples can be demons too. Yeah, sure. But like, what about if he was like, what about if he had one leg, right? Or he's got this half a leg and he just kind of walks on that, you know? And he's just like crunch, crunch, crunch every time. And I'm thinking about like, I reckon I remember a scene in The Mummy, right? Where there's, where, um, what's his name? Brandon, uh, what's what's the guy's name from The Mummy, the, the actor? Yeah, Brandon Fraser, right? Is um um is he's like shooting he's like shooting the characters and stuff and they're just kinda like they lose an arm and they just like let go of the wall or they lose a leg and they just start walking on the, the nub of their knee or whatever, right? And just like that'd be kind of crazy. Um Yeah, so I think like that could be kind of cool. And then you could draw him sort of like that, you know, sort of suggest that it just loses half a leg and it's like I'm just gonna keep on like, you know, just keep on attacking you, right? So that could be cool. And and one of the things like here, Jed, is you know, I would kind of decide whether you want these these things here, you know, and these here to be like bones or arms, you know, a skin like they don't feel it doesn't feel like this is a bone, right? It kind of feels like it's just a skinny little arm. So, and, and some of these elements in here sort of like, you know, is this an actual rib cage like with bone or it's got some skin on it and some bone? Like it just, it just doesn't feel like you're selling that story of exactly what you want. So once again, you got to get some reference for those things and I'm probably not going to just hunt around on the internet just <laughs> while we're streaming for some of this stuff because we could end up with some gross stuff really fast. I mean, I'm happy to, but you know. <laughs> just just in case um so um um yeah I, I would look up some reference for like you know zombies look up the game of thrones undead once again not going to do that now just in case there's some spoilers <laughs> um and um and and check out those things and really try and get that sense of like kind of you know scariness into it right um i think like you know this part here is kind of like pretty cool um i think that's working well and then yeah and i think like you know maybe you want to have a mix of like it's bone and flesh and you know things like that and just one of the other things is i would just sort of watch kind of the drawing of the hands and things here like they kind of this all seems a little bit small even though um even though you know it's it, it's probably sort of about right but it just kind of feels small you know maybe with these sort of things it's it's kind of nice to like you know exaggerate those those things a bit on these sort of characters you know you could have it like kind of that sort of size and it's still going to look pretty cool I, th I think so and in terms of like the face and stuff you know i think you could you could definitely make that more kind of messed up and things like that just once again looking at zombies and you know like we want to have some drool coming off the lips and maybe there's like broken pieces off the face and you know like just making it making it epic it's for doom you can go crazy <laughs> okay um so yeah yeah there, there's some notes but i think the presentation is really good and kind of your line and your, your coloring um overall is is pretty good jed all right so lots of lots of good stuff okay um all right let's also have a look here let's just keep getting through these 
these images. All right, um, Jeff. So let's have a look at this one here, Jeff. Um, um, now, hopefully, you're not watching the stream because I know you're meant to be TAing the class at the moment. <laughs> so anyway, we'll just get some notes on here. Um, so Jeff, first of all, like I think this is pretty cool. Um, it has a nice. Um, it, it has uh, uh, a nice sense of. Um, like kind of yeah it has a nice sense of painting to the values and things like that sorry i'm just um hopefully so someone's saying they've lost connection but let's hope it's not all the stream just hopefully it's uh, it's just on your end not good for you but good for us <laughs> right so just checking into things now but i'll keep keep going here um and what i think you need to do jeff is that there's some elements that are kind of getting a little bit flat all right and there's some other things you could do to really enhance the the um the focal point right so um and and just getting some of those to, some of those elements to feel really good um all right so what are some things that you could do well i think perhaps let's just try and quickly like maybe with this sort of archway thing here is it, it could just be like a little bit taller and stuff right and we could do the same sort of thing but just making it a little bit kind of more epic, right? And the flatness of things is sort of happening in here, Jeff, right? So we want to we want to try and avoid those things. We really want to try and you know paint paint some form in into those areas, and just trying to get like potentially some sections here that are kind of coming down here and then you know like another zigzag out with like another section of rock that's coming across and like kind of all those things so just really get that that nice sense of form in there um i think that if you kind of create this bigger area here it's just kind of moving it across just into the sweet spot of the painting you know a little bit more right and so potentially we could have something like that maybe there could even be some other you know some other archways kind of like up behind and stuff as well right and that and that could also just add to the epicness of the painting too you know um so there's some of those things and then if we just look at look here jeff this this value here and you know this one here is quite similar so that's where you could really you know perhaps make all this section a little bit darker All right and see how that's really going to pop forward right and then once you get that popping forward you know th that's that great spot where you can really you know you can have this little character on all right have you have your guy kind of standing there in this area oh, I'm painting in the I'm painting in the layer mask like why isn't why isn't things working anyway so little dude here stick right <laughs> and and that's like a really cool you know section where you could then you kind of like move all this across a little bit and that's going to work pretty well so yeah jeff i think there's some really cool things going on i think yeah you just want to avoid you know this sort of getting a little bit flat here and probably just pushing the focal point around and then that other step is creating that visual language within the painting you know really making sure the scene feels you know all cohesive with these elements continuing throughout the painting so so there's some things that you could uh you could definitely definitely try out all right but yeah pretty cool jeff it's looking good so far i think you just just keep going with those things um for sure all right now um now i'm just going to find out who this painting is from so lisa lisa hi lisa i don't know if you're in the chat hopefully hello if you are and um let's have a look at this well i think um Firstly, I think that it's uh, once again it's it's really cool. Like, there's lots of really good stuff going on. So, all you guys that are kind of like you know sending in stuff and is there's lots of good things going on. I sometimes feel like when you know Tim and I are giving like critiques, you're like, oh no, it's it's horrible. We do, we don't think that at all. It's just we're just trying to like okay, these are the things you could do to make it better. And then you kind of like keep talking about it. you're like, oh, you made this better and that better and this better. It's, and then it feels like there's a hundred things to make better, right? <laughs> well, it's just all ideas, and you don't have to do any of them they're just things to like kind of think about so with this one here lisa um hey hi lisa um so um some of the things that you can really think about is that a lot of the elements that you're adding in are kind of a bit flat 
right? So you want to try and really think about the structure and the form of the character, right? So we want to be thinking about the elements that we're looking up at and the elements that we're kind of looking down at. And, you know, I've, one of the things that you can also do to help yourselves, and this, this can be for all of you guys, is like you can kind of think of putting your character like within a box, right? So we could do, you know, sort of something like this. Now this is like super extreme, yeah? Let's kind of maybe, let's do it like this and like this and just, just all right. What am I doing here? Can I even draw a box? <laughs> oh, a razor. Alright, so let's just imagine this is a this is a good box that I drew. <laughs> but you get the idea. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. All right, and if you think of like you know the horizon line, right? Oh, I'm erasing. All right, there we go. So the horizon line's kind of in the middle, and you could have your character where you know we can kind of see the head up here, and then as we go down, right, like we can see kind of legs and stuff, you know, down this way, right? So start to think about like how your character kind of sits within within the box right on a perspective grid so the way you can do that is even draw the grid out and kind of like just you know think about like sort of you know what how how the character is kind of sitting in space okay and then that'll help with kind of you know how you structure things so for example one of the things to think about here is that both your feet are kind of on the same like kind of plane right so I know that like if you know if Tim was doing this critique it'd be much better like kind of show the the structure of like how to draw it and things like that but I guess what I want to do is just show you some things to think about so if you kind of you know we, we've probably you guys have seen in the stream where one of the things Tim will do is like kind of you know twist the body and things like that to get you know more kind of like dynamic pose in there so when you're kind of starting it's fine to be flat and things like that so once again like I was saying good job you know and some things you could do to kind of give more of that depth is sort of have, you know, one foot, you know, forward and one foot back and things like that. So they're kind of sitting in a different a different plane in space, right? So that's something you could do. Um, some designs, things that you could think about, Lisa, is like I would just – one of the things I think about is kind of like uh, – um, is – the, these kind of like things here is like one I'm not sure what they are and two like they feel really kind of spiky and stuff like if I if the character moves moves their arm around they're kind of going to jam or catch on things and stuff like that right so you always want to like if you've ever got things kind of like sticking out of you know arms and legs and stuff you really just want to make sure you're kind of really thinking about those things and so one of the other things with with all of these is really like getting um getting reference for this stuff so so things like you know all the leather straps and belts and things like that right is you know like having a look at these things Let's see if we can load this up here and thinking about how you could implement some of this you know into your into your painting into your design so you know like having the the little um you know these these buckles and things and then even thinking about like you know if you've got a buckle the piece of like leather belt has to be like doubled over right it's got to go through the hole and double over and then you've got these buckles that are holding that piece in and when you look at you know artists work that you're like oh, yeah the wow that's awesome you kind of like start looking into their their drawings and stuff you'd be like oh it's awesome because all these things are kind of like you know doing what they're meant to be doing right so probably all of you guys have heard that like form follows function you know and and getting these things in here to really you know fit around the form and then you know have that function so the same thing with these elements up here right 
like you know how so if you imagine this is like basically what you're telling me is all the buckles are on the other side of our arm and we just we just happen not to be able to see them right because otherwise like how do these things stay on the arm you know or are they things that she they're elastic and she you know in the morning she gets up and kind of like puts them on or they're they're you know right so just think about what these things are whenever you're drawing them on your character and when you think about it it helps with the details right so um so some of the things with the with the legs here is like you know just those bits are getting sort of all these elements are just getting like a little bit flat so just make sure that they they were uh, you know really wrapping around the form of the character and just once again get references get references for like you know the character pose you know and all those things as much as possible try to like avoid you know like these these bits are kind of getting a bit frumpy right you know there's there's the arm is like this this shape <laughs> for the arm yeah so we want to try and like remember you want to get like straight against curve you know all those kinds of things you want to think about you know the anatomy that's going on underneath so once again all i do for those things is kind of like yeah getting references for how those things go um even even things with like you know how the how the um the the what's the what's the word for this how this like kind of um uh wraps around like the hips and the legs and things like that i think like you've done a pretty good job with with those things there so that's that's working um you know really quite well um something here is like with this line down here is just think about like is it a zip or is it a pattern on the you know on the on the top or what what are those things and then really trying to describe them so there's some of the things that you could do which is always getting the references you know even for the mask you know you just look up you know golden you know mask face mask you know phantom of the opera you know all of those sorts of things right and and you get reference for how those things can sit and you know some of those details that are going on just thinking about you know really making sure that these details are really wrapping around the forms and you know like how do you tell like where does this kind of like wrap around you know in under here and how you describe you know all those things right so there's some things that you can kind of kind of think about um, lots of really cool stuff going on like I said um, yeah so awesome all right if you once again if you have any questions let me know one of the other things that try to sorry just one last thing try to think about is like probably like a few too many colors in your palette right you want to just try and limit that keep it keep it um, relatively simple and I think we were talking last week about you know kind of the, the split complementary color palette right now what what we kind of mean by that is say for example or right, let's just use your kind of palette here is what you might want to do is have kind of a oh, what did I just do? You know, is having colors like this, and let's try and find a brush here. We can kind of like mix some things. All right, so some colors like this, and all right, so colors that are basically analogous, so they're next to each other on the color wheel. They kind of like fit together. So we can have some of those colors in here, and you know we can even sort of like get into the kind of pinks and things and then what you can do is kind of like mix mix you know these colors together right and these can kind of be the the subtleties of the colors that you can kind of choose and you know we could get like you know some some darker ones right kind of mixing it with gray okay right and we can kind of we can do that in a in a subtle way as well all right and and can you see how when I'm mixing these colors, they're looking quite, that they're, they're really like kind of um, being being unified, right? And um, then you can really start to have, you know, this, this accent color that really pops. And can you see how like when I'm doing that, even these colors, right? These are nice and unified. And then this one here is really popping, all right? So this is a, a split complementary palette. So these, these colors are kind of next to each other in, on the color wheel and then the yellow is like a complementary color right and that that will be the one that pops and the the other way sorry i'm getting quite complicated with some of these things and maybe with lisa it's like oh whatever it's too too hard <laughs> right but here's some things to kind of think about as well is is the other thing is you want to think about like um the kind of how much you're using them so so with these colors here right you kind of want to use them in about like 70 
to 80% of the character. And then this accent color, you just want this to be like 10 to 20%, right? You just want to use it in small focused areas because that'll really make the character pop, right? We'll really start to notice that. So for example, you could have, you know, these elements down here um, on the legs and things, right? You could really kind of like tone down, right? You can make them you know, maybe they are kind of like these sort of colors and you can still have them as kind of like a metallic thing with, with, uh, with, um, you know, uh, filigree and all that kind of stuff going on. And, and then what you'll find is, you know, these things up here are going to like start popping more, you know, because you're really just using this less, you know, and, and that's something that you can use in terms of like your color theory, right. And how you, how you kind of putting your, putting your, um, your, your colors together and see how we're really starting to get this to, to pop a little bit more now. And then, you know, the things like I'd do is really like, you know, um, let's, for example, I'll just show you like a, a cheap little trick, right? Is we do color, we, we change the layer to black and we go um, change it to color dodge and then the image will come back and let's like pick this yellow color and kind of like, you know, paint over the top, right? And we could, I know I've like kind of messed some things up there, but we could start to really get some of these areas to to really like kind of pop now i'm using a kind of dumb brush on here so it's like not it's not working like super good but you get the idea right is that now see we're really going to like kind of pull focus into that area of contrast right and you can kind of like tone that down and you know not be too crazy with with things but you can see how that can really kind of work and the other thing to think about is if you're doing that you know equally you can kind of start Hopefully this is kind of a nice airbrushy thing going on here, but we could even, you know, like tone things down in the character in the areas where you kind of like don't necessarily want the viewer to, to really look and see how that changes things. See, we're really starting to look, you know, up at that face and kind of chest area of, of the character, right? So that's, and, and that's what you want to do is you really want to draw, you want to create like a nice big, so we're getting into some sort of, you know, more overarching kind of you know design ideas but you know we're creating like a nice triangle that we're really starting to you know focus on this area here right which is which is great so so there's some things you do now of like drawn red lines and painted colors and done all sorts everywhere right but i hope that helps and give you some ideas of, of where to go and the you know the other things is with the drawing structure stuff just look at those look at those life drawing books and things like that you know we've spoken about some of those before like the michael hampton one and the the um the loomis one um right these these kind of books um that are really helping like you know um tell you how to like structure these you know the characters and things like that right so um uh yeah okay so they're the things that you can do um i really like recommending people the the um sorry michael hampton figure drawing all right like this one there's this figure drawing um design and invention and i, I just find this one's really good for like i actually think like some of the other ones are better when you're getting better at this stuff right but this one's really good because it keeps things like really simple right it kind of breaks th breaks things down in a nice simple way you know talking about you know kind of anatomy and you know how you can think of the the body in geometric shapes and things like that and just you know if you want to learn this stuff just grab this book and just copy the pages you know just copy the pages start getting that visual library you know then go to figure drawing try and put what you're learning into practice with observation and i guarantee you 100 that then that'll help with when you're doing characters right like when you're making your own stuff up so yeah just just do the study learn those things bit of color stuff and you're on the way all right so yeah any other questions just uh, let me know um all right and we got an image from tom here now um this is pretty cool um i was kind of helping tom out during the week with this image so it's kind of changed a fair a fair bit um and i think that's really cool um all right so 
I think Tom was still got a sense of evenness of kind of this 50 50 thing so I'm gonna do a couple of things here <clears throat> and just let's see if we can't just kind of get this image just a little bit you know punchier with things all right and and I think a lot of time it's gonna be kind of moving this thing this thing <laughs> the kind of like you know the sword going into the into the skeletons right I think we just need to but I know we need to see the top of that sword right for it to kind of read as a sword otherwise it's just it's a big rock but I, I think this just kind of needs to be over here you know just a little bit more and and one of the things that's kind of uh, still fighting here against against you know the the image is kind of this this light you know strip kind of in here because it's very um it's very divisive right it, it's kind of making this into like a shape you know and kind of cutting sort of like cutting the image not in half i don't know where was it before maybe so here it's like kind of cutting the image a bit in half right and and you really want to try and avoid those things you want this you want these shapes to be a little bit different you want them to really um you know point the viewer to where you want them to kind of look right like we want to you know create those nice triangles and good shapes that are going to help within um the composition and and one other thing you could do now tom is now that you've got a lot more of this sky and stuff going on in here is that you might you want to probably get these clouds really becoming a shape as well that are that are kind of like leading us you know to this area as well right and one of the other things that you've got in here was um, was uh, uh, with with this section here I think that it, it's still getting quite flat in this area right and and there's some things like there's a lot of cool stuff that you could do in there let's let's try and um hmm, let's look up some quick reference and just see what I'm thinking is like it'd be good to have like some sort of like really cool sort of rock shelf kind of thing <sighs> maybe something like this <sighs> you know this is kind of cool what else are we going to try and find here sorry this is always like tricky on the fly let's go so something else just if you guys don't know in tools you can get size larger than you know like a particular size and then the images that pop up oh this is kind of the thing that I'm talking about yeah and this one's kind of the thing that I'm talking about let's keep looking here maybe something like this could be cool all right let's have a look oh, please work yeah <sighs> Let's go to my one of my go-to tricks when looking for reference. You're going to duplicate this tab, and then grab this one and drag it into Google Image Search, and then you can search by like visually similar images, and then we're kind of getting things that are popping up that are kind of like more, you know, what we're after. Hopefully, you know, that's the idea. I don't know if it's working uh, in this case, but it's a good way to do things. Yeah, maybe some of this business. <laughs> uh, just want some, yeah, like rock kind of shelf. I, I know what I want, I just don't know what the word is. <laughs> uh. Let's try and just do it through images. Maybe. Maybe. Let's have a look here. Nope. Nope. I know if I had it on my hard drive, I know the exact image that I think would work really well. Actually, maybe we could grab this and this might kind of work. Wow, this is like a really small image. Let's 
go back up here to like search tools size larger than yeah something like this just so we're getting rid of all these like really small images um, we kind of have want to have like kind of looking top down there's some rocks with some good kind of like some nice warmth to them. That's the one I saw before, wasn't it? Come on, load. Yes. All right. Copy image. Let's grab this. Let's paste this in here. So what I'm trying to do here is just think about like you know the kind of like the the shapes in the image here right so let's just grab this Ooh. do some of that see if I can't just kind of magic one some some elements out here that's all right Oh, now I moved it. <laughs> it's all right, we can get rid of these bits nice and easily. And we kind of want to, Command B, we kind of want to make this, let's kind of get it to fit into the, you know, the image a bit. Yeah, that looks kind of cool, All right? And maybe, you know, maybe we don't want it to look quite so tall there, All right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go through the layer settings here and just see if something doesn't, you know, kind of just work a little bit better in here, possibly. Let's grab some of this. Just kind of erase out and maybe maybe it's like we don't need so much height you know let's have something like that yeah that's kind of cool hey that's looking good and see how like this is this is really starting to create like some of this shape right into the area that we want to look right into the focal point so that is excellent and then it's going to kind of, you know, and then you can really start creating. You know, we can paint. All right, let's paint. And, and let's kind of create like a nice little like a staging area for the character to kind of stand on. So let's kind of get a little area of contrast here. You know, and just once we've got some of those textures in, we can start painting. You can paint out, you know, as much of that stuff as you as you like, and then just gonna hide all this stuff. Let's grab Tom's little character here. I'm just gonna adjustments, brightness, contrast. Let's see if we can't kind of <clears throat> magic wand a bit of this orange stuff out let's go command you kind of just make him a bit of a silhouette here bring all this stuff back and kind of get a little dude kind of put him over here and try and you know and then kind of like paint paint him in so you know getting a bit of like contrast and stuff you know around the place right so but anyway you can see there right? like that, that's kind of working 
And now this like structure, right? The kind of like how the eye is starting to move through some of this stuff is looking really cool. And then Tom, maybe some other things are like you kind of, maybe some of these, like some of this mountain could kind of be above like those, those sections there. Yeah. Look how much, look how like that makes a big difference, right? It's really pulling our eye down into this area. Yeah. And I just, this one looks a bit weird kind of wrapping around there. Yeah. I don't know. Let me just, you know, all right. And oh, man, could there be some other bits, you know, kind of over here or something, right? Oh yeah, that's cool. And maybe like, you know, could we have some more? Because remember in the class I was like, just keep trying to get that visual language happening. All right, and maybe these could like really direct your eye to, you know, that other one. And then maybe what you could do, Tom, is like you could kind of continue this across a bit, some of this mountain here. And then that's the bit where you could kind of like have this, you know, the other one, kind of, whoa, yeah. And then that's, you know, yeah, that's cool, right? And so we've kind of stopped this. I would even, you know, keep pulling in some of those little, like, grassy kind of details, bushes and things, you know, into this area, really re repeating those shapes around. All right, and then that's, that's starting to, like, come together, right? And... <clears throat> Then the next thing you can kind of do is really work on, you know, the, the lighting and things. So you could be like, let's try and can we push, you know, Oop. darken off some of these areas let's think about let's do another one of those show the other that trick the color dodge well, let's try to paint paint in a bit of see that's kind of crazy right that's sort of okay just paint in a bit of light in this area of, of focus You know, I'd always, I'd just kind of like mess around with like little pools of light around kind of where you want the viewer to really look. Um, and then the other thing you can do is like once you've got the 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 lighting in that color dodge light, you can kind of mess around with the with the actual color of it, right? Which is which is pretty cool. And you can see, you know, kind of whether you want something like warmer or cooler. Well, don't do that. <laughs> and you can kind of like, whoa, it's kind of crazy. You can mess around with things here, right? But obviously you gotta keep it keep it rare, you know, fairly simple. But yeah, you can really start kind of like, you know, playing around with some some light and some contrast and kind of yeah, working those things in. All right, but yeah, I think that's looking pretty cool, Tom. Def definitely get these the clouds. Yeah, the clouds going on, you know, focusing on those shapes, really getting some nice contrast on the edge of the sword and things like that. So, um, yeah, so I think that's, I think that's, it's looking great, Tom. I just think like something like this, you know, like just helps so much, right? This, this, you know, this kind of shape here, all these details, you know, because they're really pulling our eye into that, into the painting. You know, if we bring back this one. You can see there how it's kind of like it's 50-50, right? We've got a, almost like a line down the middle, you know? So with this one here, you know, no line down the middle, you know, pulling us into that area that we kind of want to want to look and we want to keep the viewer in the painting, right? So, okay, hope that helps. What else? Let's keep going here. All right, now this. Oh, got Facebook going off. Oh, oh. Messages everywhere. <laughs> All right. All right. So this is Suzanne. Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. If you're in the in the chat, um, yeah, just looking at these these images here. So Suzanne's just asking for a bit of a uh, bit of help. A um, couple of landscape 
sketches, um, an untraditional floating island that wasn't made of rocks and dirt. Um, do you have any advice on how to make the world pop more? Um, any unique factors that should be elaborated upon? Um, or perhaps add more at the surface? Um, and is there anything regarding... So just some general kind of like help and stuff, all right? So um, one of the things that you could really do here right, is, is probably just um, make this thing feel a bit more 3D, right? So essentially uh, this is, you know, kind of this shape, right? And we've got an edge here. So it'd be really good to describe, you know, that edge on here, right? And then I think that that would really make this thing at least feel more 3D. And then once you've got that kind of happening, I would probably just have a tendency to move some of this stuff down just because I know what you're trying to say, like you're looking down and you can see that stuff here, but just around this edge, it gets a bit awkward, right? So I'd either move these guys up a bit, you know, these little, uh, you know, school of fish or whatever, move it up a bit and maybe make them more of this kind of tone as well or just move them down a bit more so they're kind of like not on that awkward sort of area. And the way you can do this is just have this lit kind of nicely, like what you've got here with, with these kind of values and things. And then when it gets to this edge here, just kind of like do a selection around the top and then just make this, this section, you know, kind of darker. So let's just see if we can, like obviously this is gonna be a little bit messy because it's hard, you know, like not on the original file, but, um, I would just kind of like be doing some of that and you can see like straight away that's starting to have a bit more 3D kind of form to it. Excuse me guys and one of the other things is like just with the perspective you know of this of this setup is that I would actually have you know the the edge of this um, this you know like the water there that you're describing you know finish here so it doesn't go above these things here. Oops. B. Need the brush. All right, there we go. So, all right, so it does that. And then you don't have like kind of water above these things and they're actually gonna, you know, be a silhouette popping above that stuff. And and then that's just gonna like read a little bit better, right? As kind of like a, a three dimensional kind of thing. You can see there, like that's working. That's really cool, right? And then I just work on what's going on. Like, so I don't know what this kind of is here. I'd probably get rid of this shape. I think this shape is kind of like awkward unless there's some, you know, reason it's meant to be there. And I think these ones that you had on this side are kind of cool, right? So yeah, I don't know, like maybe, what would I do with this? Um, like is maybe, I don't know, could it be like a, like iceberg or something, you know, or just, just looking at like those kind of, you know, whatever, like I don't know what shapes you want it to be right so if you're trying to decide you know once again like always like all of this stuff all of the art of all of time of ever <laughs> it's just looking at reference right like I mean you know all the all the master painters um you'd be like oh well, they weren't looking at reference they were like looking at the actual model uh that's the reference <laughs> right so yeah always just looking at reference or thinking about something that's similar to what you want to do so that you can get, you know, those really good clear ideas of what it is that you want to paint. And then, you know, we can start sort of working on making a nice kind of like silhouette from, from those things, right? So there's some stuff that's just going to like make it work a little bit better on these types of things, all right? Um, with, with this one here, um, so what I would say in this one is you've got a few things that are just awkward and what I mean by that is you're creating some tangents, all right? And we kind of want to avoid tangents. So we want to avoid this stuff kind of, you know, right at the, the horizon lines, like right at the top of the page, right? It's really awkward. So we want to kind of bring that down. And one of the things I'll talk about to the guys all the time in the class is like the focal points. Like what are you trying to show within the painting? So what's the important part? So is the important part this here or is the important part this here? or what, what are the elements that you want to do? And you've got some kind of like foregroundy bits in here as well. But once again, those things are so close to the edge that they're creating tangents. So one of the things that I'm always, um, you know, 
helping people with is like their compositions, right? And one of the things that we that I'm talking about all the time, and and you know, Tim to an extent will kind of agree with some of this stuff, right? Is that there's a lot of compositional rules that aren't really rules; they're more kind of guides, right? Now, if we think about sort of just the really simple you know, main compositional rule that everyone's kind of heard of, right, is the rule of thirds, all right? Now, there's there's heaps of them, right? There's all different things and there's all different ones you can do and there's stuff that's fantastic and there's stuff that's not so great, whatever, right? Does, it doesn't matter. What What is nice about these things, about these kind of rules, is that they tend to not let you do things that don't work so well. So with the rule of thirds is the idea is that you kind of want to put things you know, on these intersection points or having elements roughly around those areas, right? Let's even talk about horizon line. So horizon line, you know, let's get the horizon line kind of on the upper third, let's get the horizon line on the on the lower third, right? So that already that's helping with a good decision in, you know, image making. And if we think about that, if we have, you know, your horizon line for this one here, right, kind of like more kind of here or something right more in this kind of like rule of thirds then you've got like a bit more room that you can play with with you know whatever focal point you want to have right so these these kind of plants and things like that and then you could have some you know here and some other stuff kind of here and you want to have some elements that are really going to kind of like create that nice kind of rhythm okay and you know there's a bit of land coming right and, and there's some things that you do so what this rule kind of really does is stop us from doing anything like this you know stops us from doing anything like this this one's kind of good but it will stop us from having the horizon line too close to the top of the page and then we've got a bit more room to create you know the focal and you can see if i just draw here it's like oh that's cool right i want to look at this thing that's over here right easy simple all right but all you need to think about is just to not get the horizon line too close to the edge of the page all right because that's a real real kind of thing you don't want to do and then watch out for these little guys on the sides you know we want to try and because what they do is they actually suck us over there and then we go whoop off <laughs> and we and you you disengage the viewer off to the edge of the page onto the next image that is not yours <laughs> all right so we want to try and really keep the view the viewer within the paintings all right, so something like this one here, like I think this one is kind of cool, right? And if we think roughly about the rule of thirds, like it's working quite well, you know, kind of got some stuff going on here. We've got, you know, the horizon lines more down the bottom and like there's some good stuff. But what I think you could, would really help here is that you've got this kind of section of the painting, you've got this and you've got a background of the ocean, right? Which is in this case, in this type of image, it really is a background. So we want to keep it as something, you know, kind of, over there but the thing you want to do is you want to create you know like a focal point right so in this situation we want to start you know amping up the contrast and textures and all those types of things in this area here right and you know possibly this could be a really cool one where you could have like a you know a little character or whatever right some some characters whatever the case may be and you're actually creating a really nice focal point around that section of the story of this image all right so there's some things that you can kind of you know and see how this kind of goes down there it's just a bit awkward feels not that natural so maybe that could just kind of you know come over there a little bit more and do something like that right and then this is sort of a piece of a nice piece of land the character's kind of wa walking along you could potentially have some other little overlapping little bits of you know kind of shrubs and things along here right and create a really nice focal point for for those things um just watch the scale right so scale of some of these like leaves and things they feel like too big compared to the size of a tree and the size of a person right so you want to kind of control that stuff those those if you're going to have like a little you know bush or something with leaves on it they're, they're more like this kind of size right so just working on those those elements of scale on there too right so some really cool stuff off to a really good start with some of these things just some ideas to think about and some directions that you can go with these paintings so um yeah once again not sure if you're in the chat but if you are hope that helps and uh, if not watch your back later <laughs> all right let's let's go let's move on to this next one here all right so um this is an image from uh connor um yeah so connor um once again, I think um, uh, I think that's that's looking really cool. Um, and 
um, yeah, there's some there's some really good stuff going on. Um, I would say like a little bit like uh, I can't remember whose it was, but just before you know, thinking about the references and trying to you know the biggest thing is looking at those references for what to paint and then that will help you paint those things right so i know tim tim's uh tim's not here but he's always a big one for like jackets and how they go because he you know did a comic pirates and he drew a lot of jackets <laughs> so he's good at drawing jackets um so the biggest thing is like you you want to kind of work out like what's actually going on here and how this stuff you know kind of works right like you, you've got kind of a, a collar here but if we look at those things you know they'll kind of have you know all these other bits and pieces going on folds and overlaps and all that kind of stuff which makes those things feel functional right so you you need to describe those things and while you're after a good start with what you're doing like that's the next level of stuff that you can do that's the next level of things um this one's really tricky here because we've got a lot of foreshortening going on so we probably you know we just want to break this arm down into like a cylinder right and just you know try and think about that and then as the cylinder is getting closer to us it's getting bigger right and then we just think about you know how you're holding the sword and where your thumb goes and how you know like take some photos do whatever just to try and think about that but mostly it's just thinking about you know how those how, how these kind of um um, cylinders kind of, of of the arm shape are like fitting together right so same thing when you kind of like get down here as we got you know starting to get like a little bit small kind of you know down towards the hand so you know generally the jackets gonna have it sort of won't go into the skin tight kind of thing down here you know it's more gonna have it, it's gonna kind of bow out at the end a little bit you know and ha maybe have some cuffs or some you know um, uh, uh, buttons and buckles and you know things like that right and then also thinking about like you know I'd just look up some reference for a corset you know and how that kind of goes where it kind of sits you know in terms of the anatomy of things um, so it just seems like a little low here and just how these pieces fit together right so they're the things that you do and just try to like think simply about things it can be really tricky when you're starting out right like it can be really tricky to kind of be like how do i how do i even draw this stuff you know so once again like one of the biggest things that we get students to do is like really you know look at these um you know where was that where was that book here you know is really looking at this is at this stuff right and trying to think about like how because that's what he's doing you can see it right he's just thinking of these all these things are like boxes and cylinders and how do they fit together and how do i make them twist and how do i how do i put a more complex shape into a simple shape and then how do they all start kind of like fitting together right so it's just you know it, it's just all of these things and when you actually kind of break it down like it's not that difficult right it's and when you're starting out these things can start looking a bit stiff and all that kind of stuff but i wouldn't even worry about that i'd just worry about really trying to get your things to look more um like they have more construction to them because what will happen is when you start getting better at it everything will start to look like it has more volume right it will start to feel three-dimensional and that's what you want to do because the 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 art of drawing right is that you're creating like an optical illusion on the page is that you're trying to say this 2d flat page is a three-dimensional thing right so i was trying to work out how to do that how to do that stuff and then all these things like the belt buckle from before is really looking at those references looking at references for how these like how this fits together so you've got little dots here right are they dots that are like a little you know piece of something that's on the you know on the outside of the corset, or are these the bits where the actual um, lace is going into and wrapping around back through the underside of the corset, right so just look at the reference you know and it will tell you how to do it so that's one of the things like I love it when people draw shoes right they'll draw like a shoe and they'll draw like you know these dots here and then they'll just have laces on it it's like the lace is meant to go in the hole there <laughs> you know because like that's what's so not not that but I know there's some other stuff that goes on in these kind of like you know very uh, um, you know detailed like kind of outfits right so that might not have been what was happening there in the thing you're looking at or imagining right but yeah try to try to think of those things get the references and then when you draw them they'll just look more um, more functional right and then it just looks um, more believable so that's how you get that you know believability in in there 
and you can always work on the amount of style that you want to have in the image that's got nothing to do with functionality or believability right so let's have a look so what i want to because you know this is a good example is uh what's his name J jamie jamie hewlett you know gorillas sketches all right I know when I was when I was like kind of younger, you know, I really used to love um, like Jamie Hewlett stuff. Let's try and find. You know, and I and I used to draw a lot of stuff. Uh, I used to you know like draw a lot of this kind of stuff, and it was it was you know before I knew what was going on, right? <laughs> so I'd do the same things you guys do, and I'd be like, I don't know why his look better than mine, right? So. If you kind of look at this stuff it's it's like it's super stylized but it still feels like it could work right like look at these boots you know the buckles right they feel like even though they're very abstracted and simple it feels like that buckle is holding that piece of you know material down or these like even these boots you know how they kind of like flaps work and things like that they look really cool right um, uh, you know right <laughs> even like ponchos you know he's even indicated that his arms kind of sitting under there and there's like kind of some form and stuff just for, through really simple like um kind of shapes and things or really simple shading you know have a look at the guitar like it's still it's got you know perspective to it right like it's got a sense of dimension to it as well even though there's some things on there that are very abstract and that's why like his stuff feels really cool because it's this mix of like really flat graphic shapes but also like kind of like form follows function stuff and construction you know he's still thinking about the three dimensionality of the character this that he's drawing so it's awesome so when you like stylizing things you know, you can still have things stylized, but they still can feel like they work. And the guys that can do that really well are the ones where their stuff looks the best, right? So, so that's what you want to do. So that's why I say, Connor, um, really cool. Value is great. You know, all those, you know, those those things are working really well. And there's lots of really good stuff going on in the image. Just think about the construction, the functionality of things. You know, getting references. Okay. Once again, hope that helps. Um, all right, let's go. Okay, on to uh, James. So, um, uh, yeah, James, um, I don't know if you're in the, the, the Twitch stream or whatever once again, but if you are, let me know. And um, um, these, are, these are really cool. Um, I, think, I think they're good. I think um, they're nice, uh, clear silhouettes. Um, I think the, the main thing now, like if you want to take these to the next level, the the stuff that you can do is sort of like um is sort of, hey james how's it how's it going um so the things that you can do is kind of like just work on your um uh finish to things and you kind of like finesse you know so you've got some areas here where you kind of like just scratchy scratchy you know kind of like just mushing things in here where you know you kind of just want to start thinking about okay what what is that material you know how do i describe that material and do i want some texture into it do i want some grit and grime you know things like that and then kind of like paint it smooth and then add that kind of stuff on top um i think that overall the the details are pretty good and yeah it's just watching these things like you know where it kind of gets a bit sloppy and stuff you know sort of like around here and things like that this you know kind of piece here i feel like that could be kind of described better as to like how that surface you know kind of works um and you know potentially like maybe this piece here on the, on these guns could be more just like a darker version of the green metal or whatever right just so it's like not so kind of contrasty um because you really want to get you know kind of those areas of complexity you know in here right so um there's there's some things like um let's just have a look at guns <laughs> all right let's see let's see here so one thing that that i kind of noticed straight away is that with a lot of these the they're actually like kind of flat in terms of their coloring and stuff right there's, there's a couple that have you know some colors and these ones that have kind of like wooden um 
you know, elements around them have a different color, but a lot of the ones that are kind of like metal are just, you know, metal and metal and metal, <laughs> right? And yeah, sure, you can you can change all that stuff, you know, like with this here, right? So th this is a good example. So let's have a look. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> cool story. But um, what I would say is, actually, let's just try this. <clears throat> all right we just need to load okay so there's there's lots of kind of details and things around here right and it's just kind of capturing those things so looking at you know how this kind of like line works through here but see how it's kind of like beveled on the edge as well so it feels like that that piece is actually kind of inset and just trying to work on like even these little cut lines here you know it feels like you undo that screw in this bit comes apart and stuff like that so it's just thinking about you know all those kinds of little bits of functionality just really getting some of these details you know the little letters and things like that um, uh, making sure like these kind of pieces really feel like that you know kind of um, material indication so you know they're the things that you kind of do like they're the next level stuff making sure that when you draw these things you're using like um, a straight line you know holding shift and um, using the um, you know like when you're doing you know circles and things is like using the tools you know holding shift right and then kind of you know filling it with that right and then basically if you want to let's hang on let's do this on the layer oop, oop, oop. all right right so then you could duplicate that you could transform it right you can click the little lock in the middle and then we can go like you know 75 all right and then if we preserve transparency on this, we can drag in like a bit of a highlight on this edge and create like a little button here. Do, do you kind of see that? So using those Photoshop tools rather than just kind of like hacking it out, which is okay, but there's just there's just more crisp and clean ways that you can do it, which is with weapons, James, like that's something that just really, really works, right? Is using those Photoshop tools because then it looks more mechanical, you know? and you could do the same things with kind of like your you know the paint work and stuff on here right which is just really filling it flat and then just um and and then just you know getting those things to to like just work a little bit better so once again you can duplicate this transform maybe make it like you know 80 and then you can go like command u and you can you know kind of like have it inset or you can even whoop, pop it out and you get it all right so just yeah just those photoshop tools so i think like overall you know like design wise and when you're putting together looks really good and then it's just the next level stuff is just working on like basically all those uh, no not necessarily form flows function because i think you got all that stuff working well but just tidying up those things just making them a bit more look like you know the actual kind of weapon hard edge you know kind of stuff right so yeah that that's pretty much it but i think they're cool james awesome you should do some more right if it's something you, you're interested in doing i definitely like the the pink one <laughs> awesome you can just imagine the soldiers out there in the field just you know um walking around with their their <laughs> paint gun <laughs> Um, uh, um, so James is asking if there's even any point of doing 2D designs for weapons or has 3D replaced it um, you know that's an interesting question um, I know that I actually think that probably what is good is a combination of the two right is is 3D 3D is really good for weapons because you can get a sense of like, you know, how you kind of hold it and where, you know, like kind of the the volume of it, right? Like that's really good for um, for the kind of, for weapon design, right? So that's why it works really well because you can just, even in SketchUp or something, you can just kind of block it out and go like, it's kind of this thick and that bit's that long and right? And it feels like it's kind of... Um, um, uh you know it, it, you can really get that sense of weight and stuff in there right so that's really good but i think in terms of like overall design you know it's really good to kind of do like you know silhouettes and things like that first so um let's have a look at you know i know like darren quatch super awesome at this stuff right darren 
um, guns. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be what we want. Um, you know, I guess it doesn't really. I guess this is good, like James, in terms of like this sort of reference, right? Is just that's good in terms of like see how you know it just feels a bit like cleaner and more mechanical, right? These are like really flat, you know, shapes of color. These lines are really crisp, you know, and it's it kind of you know it almost looks quite realistic, right? Um, the other thing is like you know getting into like these things here, right? Is that well, these aren't very good, but <laughs> but obviously, like pushing silhouettes around and things like that is is really important in two D, you know. And then you could potentially go into three D, and then you kind of like. But then, having said that, you just see guys like Darren Quatch and things where they just draw them out in two D, and they look amazing, you know. Just trying to find some some nice silhouettes for things, you know. So like this type of stuff, you know, excellent. Like in terms of just exploring those ideas of shapes and and things like that i think that is always much faster in 2d like super fast but then you know if you're really trying to get something super refined um you know then certainly 3d is going to help with with some of those things for sure but not always you know the district nine guns are all kind of drawn up in in 2d you know so they're, they're okay <laughs> um yeah, but there's certainly a lot of stuff going on in 3D these days just because it's getting so much faster. So you can certainly design a bit more in 3D as well, I think. But, you know, compared to compared to back in the day. But, um, no, I certainly think a good mix, James, is good, right? So, um, you know, learning some 3D is certainly not going to hurt. is very useful in these situations. But then having those 2D skills so you can kind of paint on top and do those things um, is really important as well. So... Yeah, but cool questions. So, all right, awesome stuff, James. Let's have a look at um, some others here. We've done that one, done that one. All right, and then we've got um, Kyle here. So I think Kyle's question was kind of like, you know, been working on like blending, you know, kind of uh, um, tones and things together. Um, so I think Kyle, like that's pretty good. I um, mean, this one in terms of like blending those things. All right, and I think that, um, so like some of the other guys, the things you need to keep working on is like looking at the reference, you know, the form follows function stuff, the construction of the drawings, you know, those things are really important. So, um, you know, like I was saying at the start, you know, almost putting a perspective grid up, getting you guy in the box, because at the moment he kind of looks like he's like laying flat a bit right like he's got really big legs and then he kind of goes off into the distance right it's almost like you're creating a perspective triangle that goes off into the distance so um you know you want to obviously avoid that stuff and just learning about the construction like i feel like you're getting better and better all the time right it's just keep going keep keep pushing yourself keep learning those things right um um keep um just yeah i mean it's just the same notes to some of the other guys which is really look at those like you know those good anatomy books the figure drawing books you know try to just copy pages of that all the time so you're just getting a bit better you know day by day at those things maybe try maybe something you could do Kyle is like go you know every day I'm going to get up and I'm I'm going to do like you know 10 10 studies of like an arm or 10 studies of hands or 10 studies of feet right and just start to create that like visual library learning how to construct those things and then that will help with the painting and things like that right um so yeah because obviously if we go into like you know some anatomy things is that you know and we just sort of break things down like kind of simply right is we've got like shoulder kind of there and then we've got you know elbow in here somewhere and you know there's the rule where like kind of the shoulder to the elbow and then the elbow to the wrist at the same distance, right? So it's thinking about those things. So we need to have, you know, that kind of going on. And it's kind of hard to see in here like where the elbow goes and how this like kind of got a shape here and then this one goes up. And is this the elbow or is it a bicep 
or you know what's exactly going on with that stuff there so they're the things that in your head you need to be thinking about right is like this is the bicep this is the shoulder you know this is the elbow you know forearm into wrist you know those types of things um, when you're looking at the hand and if like uh, if we can switch back to to this for a minute Rick is like um, you know like if we're looking at our hand you know you can see that that it's basically like um, um, uh, a rectangle right like this you know the the palm part is a rectangle you know and yeah there's some stuff that kind of goes onto it but it's sort of like it's always that shape and we kind of have like a wedge that's kind of in there right for our thumb you know and that's kind of like sits in that space and if we look back I think that um, if we look back at the Michael Hampton one um, now there was a page here that I was looking now I won't be able to find it um, mm -mm, nope 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 yes all right so we can see that kind of like our thumb fits into our hand here and if we look at this if we look at this um, little drawing here is that see you kind of got a wedge shape here and that shape exists in the body quite a lot right so we need to learn how to kind of draw that shape and you kind of get a web shape and then you got your fingers <laughs> coming out from there so if if we look at you at your drawing here Kyle it's like you kind of almost got fingers all the way up to like here all right so you just need to make sure that you're getting this part and then you know the fingers and an easy way to construct them is they're just cylinders you know popping out of that surface right so you know it's like we've got if we want to really make it super simple is like we've kind of got this right and then we've got like our little our little like kind of you know sausages that are that are popping out of there right so the little cylinders you know and and there's three segments to them and they're becoming the fingers and then you've got you know our web shape that's becoming um the thumb right so and and then what happens is if you know how to construct that then you can draw that from any angle you want because all you need to do is know how to draw a box <laughs> right and then you can just draw the box at like any angle that you kind of see fit right you just draw your box and then you got your fingers and then you got your, you know your thumb right okay so now that we're good to go right on those sort of things so the only way that you can kind of learn that is by looking at these things and kind of just studying them and picking them up and doing them over and over and again and whilst I say flippantly you know how simple it is you start getting to things that are really quite complex right so we start getting into you know how does a shoulder fit into the torso and then I want to because the reason why people are teaching you this is so you can draw it from any angle out of your imagination right and then if you can if you can visualize things at any angle and then you're looking at reference as well the understanding starts converging right and you start knowing how to draw things kind of out of your head and then also adding reference to them and like the things are looking really cool right so that's what you kind of want to be doing all right so um so that's what i say Carl. just keep working on the construction the blending and stuff and the that is good it's really coming along right and it's mostly that so like here you know we want to know shoulder elbow you know hand right like at the moment it's like where's the elbow <laughs> where is yep i don't know right so just thinking about those things okay so yeah cool stuff there's improvements going on with all this but there's some things you can kind of think about okay all right so have a look oh well, i think that might be it yeah because this is okay all right so um yeah cool well some some awesome stuff guys um and i think it, there's lots of uh yeah it's really looking good um you know does anyone um does anyone have any questions um, at all of things they're kind of like doing at the moment that you know kind of either struggling with or need help with or anything like that just yeah once again post up questions if you want um, once again if anyone's dropped into the twitch stream um, Tim's not here this week he's about to be a dad so, <laughs> so he's not doing it this week and um, yeah I'm here um, next week we've got Petey Yong coming into the stream so we've got some cool stuff going on so stay tuned for all of that all right okay let's um let's just move into let's just yeah I was gonna like have a break but like let's not do that because I'll probably just fall asleep so let's just move straight into like doing some doing some more pain here right um, so what I thought I'd do for you guys this week is um, obviously like Tim's not here so we can't do like a little collab thing um, but 
let's maybe um have a look now i don't know where did i have all this i had a whole bunch of kind of references that i was looking at here um let me kind of close all these things down uh, mm -hmm. so i want to just show you guys how to do some color painting how to come up with some like no just that color painting <laughs> All right, how to start, how to do it. Um, just some techniques for that. So I guess, you know, with this week, I'm sorry for you guys that are super like character focused because yeah, obviously that's uh, uh, not my, not my, um, you know, deal. But anyway, we'll, uh, we can, we can move along and, <laughs> and deal with that. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get some references together here, all right? So let's go back to let's go back to here uh, all right okay got some references let's grab a few things here I'm just gonna copy them into my file here so you guys can kind of see them and we're just gonna kind of start talking about stuff So maybe what I'll do is maybe start dragging some of these things over here. All right. Awesome golf courses on the edge of cliffs. <laughs> Pretty cool. I was thinking about doing some, you know, kind of like epic landscape. <laughs> In here as well. All right. What else do we have here? Some islands. It's kind of more kind of flat pieces. All right, let's go back to kind of Google here. And, you know, I'm kind of searching the same as what I showed you guys. So it's, it's really cool to kind of like, you know, make sure the images are a nice big size. So at least when you, you know, if you find something useful, we can, uh, you know, kind of have that within the, within the paintings. Anyway, I've got enough stuff. We'll just, let's just go from here, right? So, I've got a pretty big canvas here, so I'm just going to kind of resize some of these here, just make them a little bit smaller and easier to manage. I think that'll be pretty cool. All right, and we just once again, like what I'm doing, even with this stuff here, is setting up a reference, you know, reference sheet. Right, we're going to paint in this canvas, but all right. So I always like to kind of set up a mask. I like to have a black background around my image. One of the other things I'd like to do is make it kind of like widescreen. Um, it's a more visually pleasing kind of format. Uh, you can make things tall if you want, but we're going to go with this. Um, I tend to find that a lot of the times I am working on widescreen format because you're designing for like for screen a lot. So whether it's film or games, um, you know, it's always this uh, type of scenario that we're doing here. So I just kind of drag it out, use the crop tool, awesome, just adds extra space to my canvas. And then I can just alt right click all of these kind of images here. And if there's any things I'm doing, um, um, you know, that you're not sure about, just please, please ask. Um, see a couple of questions going on here. Hang on, I'll get to them in a second. Let's get all this set up first. Or actually that one's All right, let's just zoop. All right. Um uh good brush set. Okay, we can go with that. 
All right. <laughs> Rick is giving me ideas. Have a giant sea god climbing out onto the onto the shore. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Okay, brush set. Brush set. A really easy one, great one. Always telling people about is go to and it's a really cool website in the first place as well. Let's go to one pixel brush dot com and if you've seen the brushes that tim tim uses these brushes these exact ones right i have a brush set that has this plus some other things but one pixel brush um company run by shady Safidi, really awesome they do lots of awesome stuff so you know first of all just check out the website and if you go to tutorials there's once again um, always recommend you know these tutorials to people they're excellent they're intro to digital painting um and shady goes through a whole bunch of different things really good really good um on here you've got the jamie jones brush set just download that away you go that's it done all right you've got jamie jones's brushes right there and pretty much like if you've seen the brushes that tim has been using the last few weeks it's just that brush set all right um that is this brush set here so yeah th i think this is this is it right this, this is the the one potentially yeah, so there's lots of cool stuff in here. It's basically everything you could ever need is kind of in here, right? So it's a, it's a great tool bag. I really like this one here. Um, this one's excellent. It has like a really nice kind of, uh, really nice kind of like, you know, um, feeling to this brush. So you get some texture. You can also get some kind of like nice, you know, kind of light like lines in there. And you can kind of, you know, if you, you can get some really like hard edges as well, right? So I'm just doing that by controlling how hard I'm pressing how hard I'm pressing and um, and also like how big I'm making the brush. And you can get some really, you know, great, this is basically like a good, you know, brush for all sorts of stuff. So, but we're not gonna start in black and white. <laughs> we are going to start in color, all right? So when you're starting in color, one of the, you know, the things to do, which I think is really good, is to just get your references and basically start with a sketch from the reference, right? The same as when you're doing character, just getting the, you know, getting a references for pose and references for, you know, all these things. And the more you do it, the less you need the reference, right? But, um, you know, really, really awesome um, just, to, just to do that. So we're just kind of get, gonna get in like a loose sketch and just kind of do things in, in color and, you know, maybe get a bit of texture in there and things like that, but we'll see, we'll see how we go. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I like to I'm kind of going to combine some of the things I'm looking at and kind of do a painting and you know we can just we can just color pick off the you know off the uh, the plates here like off the the plates the such like you know industry talk mm -hmm, off the reference right <laughs> like the plate basically like you know when you're doing matte paintings or whatever right you're kind of working off a plate which would be the the initial kind of like shot. That, that you're doing but you know yeah whatever shut up Tom. just paint <laughs> all right so i'm just going to start just kind of like blocking in you know kind of the color palettes you know is it going to be a bit kind of more of this like yellowy or what's going on here and just going to start sort of carving out some of these shapes and i'll zoom in for you guys because it's probably a little bit small isn't it so let's do that and let's do that okay we should be good to go here so let's have a look. So I'm gonna kind of start combining a few things here. So we want to have like some land kind of popping off over here, right? Because that's gonna be cool. All right, and we want to have, you know, maybe there's some ocean bits in here, and maybe we've got like some other bits and kind of like land and stuff kind of like down here and then maybe we could kind of muck around with some things here and kind of start creating some some height in the landscape And just thinking about like some of these forms a little bit. Yep, 
Yeah, so like kind of my color palette is sort of the reference, right? I'm not straying too far from things. So, you know, if we're going to make the water kind of that blue, we need to just probably get, you know, some of that going on in there. All right, and what do we want to do? Let's kind of, I don't know, we have, we want to have some alien rocks, so we do we want to make it like a big castle or something. I always draw castles. <laughs> I don't know. Why not? Hey, let's just come on. Let's do this. Let's make it a castle. Yeah, yeah. So that you know, um. So, hey, Anthony. So Anthony says, you know, the horizon line is kind of like on the rule of thirds. So one thing that I really find useful when looking at the reference is like, if you think that it's a good composition, then it is right. Don't worry about like what the what type of composition it is just be like oh does it look cool if it looks cool then it's probably good <laughs> right so just yeah so kind of go with that gut instinct and you know and and then start just you know painting from the reference right so essentially like i'm combining sort of um this one so this one here with this one with this one right and just trying to get like a mix of these things happening. And I think, I kind of feel like they're close enough together, you know, sort of like, uh, not necessarily just color wise, but um, kind of uh, like subject matter wise that I can kind of, you know, get get away with using bits of, you know, both of these. So I'm just trying to add a little bit more blue in here and kind of get this working. Um, Let's think about what's what's really cool about this one here is we're getting some scale. This one, sorry, we're getting some scale from some of these elements in here, right? So if I kind of get these like dibbly dobbly, you know, bits and pieces in here, All right? They're going to create like a nice sense of scale. And we're going to think about some of, you know, we, do we need to? We're not going to be too concerned about like kind of you know brush stroke economy and all those types of things just want you guys kind of you know um basically practicing you know looking at the reference and you know bringing a sense of that into your work right because because you know i can see from lots of your paintings that, that that's what's you know whether it's characters or guns or you know whatever is like it's kind of always the thing starting out is like you just it's kind of like what do i look at how do i look at it you know, and then training your eye to kind of like, you know, see those things, right? Painting, painting, painting. <laughs> Just trying to indicate little bits of form and stuff. Let's try to have this as like some some clouds and things, sort of like you know painting in reverse. Let's maybe try and get a little bit of a little bit more atmosphere and stuff, right? And we're, and we're still kind of thinking about you know in terms of the values, like dark comes forward and light recedes. We're in like color here, so there's a few little you know complicated things that that have to work, but you, know, you can see just like tone that down a bit right push it more into the the value of the sky and it's going to kind of pop off in the distance a little bit more all right let's really start kind of so um so someone asked like does does painting form come from practice of drawing outlines or should it or should people go into painting forms it it comes from all of it, <laughs> all of it, right? Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's annoying when you sort of say this stuff. It's like, just do all of it. Yeah, but it's just a lot of, it's just that practice, right? Learning, a lot of it is actually nothing to do with drawing or painting or anything like that. A lot of it is how, you, how you're thinking about things in your brain, right? Like, that's what it is. Because, like, you're actually thinking about, like, you can't really draw the forms if you're not thinking about the forms, right? Does that make sense, guys? It's like, yeah. <laughs> and then what happens is it starts to become, you know, it starts to become like walking, right? Where, 
you know, I've always, I've had walking described to me. If you break it down into like animation class, walking is essentially like um, it's the uh, perpetual motion of falling over, right? So basically, like you fall over and you catch yourself, you fall over, you catch yourself, you, you know. And if you thought about that, you'd be like everyone would fall on the ground, right? But after a while, you just do it, right? You don't think about it. Kind of like, you know, like riding a bike, I suppose, right? When um, I actually had this experience really recently, right? Like this is crazy. This shows how old I'm getting. Is that, um, you know, when I was a kid, I used to ride my bike like all the time, everywhere, right? Like just er everywhere you can possibly imagine. And um, I hadn't ridden a bike for ages. And I went to, you know, I was like the kids were riding and they're like, come on, dad, ride a bike. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no drivers. Like, let's go out for a ride, you know. And when they go, I'm like, how do I do this again? <laughs> and it was actually really freaky. I was like, what is going on? And when you actually think about doing it, it's like really, you're like, it's really quite nerve wracking. You know, I think teaching someone older how to ride a bike would be quite tricky because essentially it's sort of, it doesn't make any sense, right? It's like what you do is you just hop on and start pedaling and you'll be okay because <laughs> the momentum just keeps you upright. But to think about that in your head is kind of crazy. So painting is kind of like one of those things, which is like painting and drawing, you know, at the start, it's really hard because a lot of things like don't make sense. But once you get it, it just becomes, it becomes like, um, you know, I've described it before as like an, an innate skill, right? Something you do automatically, like walking, like riding a bike, you know, all of those things, you know? And um, yeah, it just, it takes practice. Like all of those things, it takes practice. All right, so getting sidetracked here and not thinking about what I'm doing, but that's all good. <laughs> that's all good. So, so like here, I start to, so in the reference, you know, the things that I'm looking at is like, see how, sorry, I don't know if you guys can see this, hopefully. Let's zoom up. Let's zoom up. See how like these shapes, right, around the edge, right, are kind of like this in here is describing a surface, right? See how the, the actual, these trees and things are kind of like wrapping around this surface here. Same thing as if you're drawing an arm and we've got like a belt buckle going over it, it's wrapping around that surface. So in your head, what you need to be thinking about is how, what those things are doing, you know, and this is kind of like wrapping around the surface less and then sheer drop off, right? And then going down. But then all those lines are kind of like, you know, they're, they're um, vertical, right? Same thing, you can really see in here. So the things you wanna paint, so when you start getting better at painting is you wanna be like indicating details, right? Because the more you can indicate or suggest, the more interesting things are, okay? So you don't have to paint all the details in. And things like this here is we want to start getting these shapes in here, right? Like these are just shapes. And I know like the f when I first, you know, when this stuff was kind of first told to me, I like didn't get it. I'm like, what do you mean by like a shape? Like I'm not, I don't, I don't know comprehende, right? Don't understand. But I think the best way that someone ever kind of helped me understand this and what I'm going to tell you guys is that this, what I'm painting here is like, you could cut this out of paper, right? You could cut this shape out of paper. And that's what you want to kind of do is you want to paint these shapes that are going to kind of like indicate form, right? Indicate details. And I know when um, I've heard like Kevin Chen, any of you guys are not sure, look up Kevin Chen, right? When he's describing how to do figure drawing is the way he gets the awesome amount of form into these, so let's just see if drawing, I was gonna do figure drawing, but let's just see if drawing kind of works out here. All right, so so if we look at, you know, crazy ones like this, right, where they're looking, you know, pretty realistic. Let's have a look, come on, all right. So now this is, you know, it's kind of hard to see, but, um, the way he's making these things feel so real realistic is he's thinking of these shadows as shapes, right? And the shape is describing the form. Just, you know, if you look at this torso, it could be a rock, it could be a torso, you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's a, it's a form that has volume and the shadow shape is one, describing what the light is doing and two, describing what the surface is doing. Okay, so we've got two things that are going on and you want to control both at the same time. 
and the more you can control both at the same time the more your drawings or your paintings will feel like they have volume and form to them i hope that's kind of clear right so you know i haven't done the greatest job here but you get the idea of what's kind of like going on and we can push that further and indicating those things and what happens here and maybe there's maybe we could you know see a bit of like ground down here so just chopping in with this like kind of little zigzag there right it's just once again kind of showing that there's like some ground down here and we could once again to like kind of push some elements of scale we can kind of have some rocks and things that are kind of like you know coming off the edge of this surface now i always like to it's a great it's a great way to work like indicate transition points so you can see, see how much like scale and interesting detail that's giving there so whenever like you know rocks are going into water or things like that you know like you can see it in all of them right there's these little trend sorry you guys once again there's these little like transitional details so here um the other thing is like when you got rocks and cliffs there's always going to be white water you know the water is is moving and it's butting up against the surface and that's creating that you know that that wash in the water so there are other things that you can do to indicate scale and form and you know all of the all of the things and what you want to do is just suggest all those things in you know kind of if you're just suggesting you know three or four things at a time right it's going to make the the painting more and more interesting you know as as we go along here so um keep going along here right and one of the things that you can start doing and you can see what's going on is if we start you know kind of painting some form to these you know to these mountains and these surfaces right well if we have a look at the reference here you can see how see how there's like lots of little dots and things in these areas well they're really starting to like help describe those surfaces right help describe like where the light's hitting and what the form is doing uh, okay so another question is like where uh, when and where do you separate foreground and start introducing atmospheric fade well um, yeah so I'm, I'm doing that through the use of values all right so let's just let's kind of separate some of this bit just get it to work a little bit better here so I've got a nice nice like transition because i got some little messy bits there all right let's just do do some of that now a really cool way to kind of get to see what you're doing here is have just select around your painting right and click the little yin yang sign down here right adjustment layers and then you go down to black and white and just put that layer on right and if those like and what should happen is even though you're painting in color those values should start to read so you know dark sort of coming forward and light receding and that's kind of what the atmospheric um you know kind of perspective is all right so by atmospheric perspective talking about you know as things go off into the distance they kind of you know they they get a little bit lighter or they recede into the the you know kind of color of the sky right so um yep so let's keep kind of going here what i'm going to do is i am going to let's just do a few little tricky things all right i'm going to uh add a soft light layer soft light layer and just kind of start doing that right just kind of dragging in some some other like tones here and just you know pushing you know, i can start kind of like pushing a bit of atmosphere and things around all right so and that's just going to add a bit more a bit more kind of complexity to the to the colors right so that's pretty cool let's just that'll do for now all right just paint over the top like to have you know like we were kind of showing with tom's you know paint before is having these these, these are things where you can start to like uh, add your own kind of bits and pieces to the painting where we're starting to add some shapes down here which are creating a nice little triangle kind of like drawing us into the composition a bit all right let's keep 
some of this stuff here is like where I really like to start adding in those like photo textures. So if you guys are in the stream like last week at all and you know saw like Tim and I doing that kind of mashup is that I was starting to add in like some photos to get some textures and things like that, right? Which is which is awesome. But you know here we're just we're just kind of sketching. Just sketching. Nothing too crazy, just sketching around. Let's try working in you know, some of these sort of like just cliff tones and things here. Try to think about describing the form as well. Maybe we could add, you know, maybe we could add some sand and bits and pieces in here, potentially. Let's have a look here. Just in some of these areas. No, just keep painting away. Don't want that to feel too like the same shape everywhere, right? So you know, so just kind of like maybe there's some trees, rocks, you know, just little little details kind of breaking that surface. That sorry, not the surface, the the silhouette, right? And that's going to really help add some scale to things. And maybe later on we could start thinking about how we could add, you know, maybe like a, uh, maybe there's a pathway or a trail, you know, a road. One thing I really like about the, you know, the reference image, this one here is it really has this awesome sense of scale. So we're just trying to capture those things. So making sure that those it's kind of making sure that those the, the the kind of trees and stuff don't feel too big like you know they're kind of it's like they're there but they're kind of smaller so how do we do that Um, so someone's asking is did I decide the direction of the light you know <clears throat> before I started or is it something that just kind of comes along as you're doing it and really a lot of it is dictated by the reference once again so I'm kind of looking at these and kind of they're all sort of you know they've got this blasted out sky so it's kind of like you know hazing off over there and I was kind of like that could be kind of cool if we do some type of castle thing and you know or whatever it is we could turn this into anything right. And we could just start, you know, indicating some some details here. Some other little buildings and stuff to kind of yeah, go up towards, you know, top of this like, you know, King's Landing sort of area or something, right? Like this, yeah. Game of Thrones. Oh man, so good. Right, just trying to get a few extra little details and You just like over time you get better at those little indications of things, right? So once again, just just practice. How do you practice this stuff? Well, what you do is you just literally just grab, you know, one of these and just do a painting of that and just try and um just try and do a study, right? And then as you go along, bit by bit, you can add more and more, you know, elements of your own into it.
just go through, keep, you know, kind of adding more scale cues. And the more I go through it, the less I'm kind of looking at the reference and the more I'm kind of just using my own painting. And I'll do a combination of things of like looking at the reference, looking at the painting, trying to see yeah, describe those bits in there and keep it like kind of and loose and gestural and all those kind of nice things that we want to have going on. I'll show you guys like another little, <clears throat> you know, another little pro tip kind of thing, <laughs> which is like we copy and paste all of this. So Command Shift C, right, and Command V or Control if you're on a PC, and then we go Command T, right, for transform. Right click on it flip horizontal right and that'll basically just flip the image around and what you can do is like sometimes okay there's two different points of view not points of view i think both of these things are valid and really good you want to flip the image around so that you kind of see it in a different light right like it's um back in the day the old master painters what they used to do is they used to be painting in their studio they'd be painting their figure blah 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 and what they do is they have a big mirror behind them you know at the back of their studio and what they do is they just step aside turn around look into the mirror and they'd actually see their painting back to front right just like this so we're kind of actually doing a trick that's been done for like hundreds of years but it actually helps you kind of see the image just afresh right like it totally changes now one of the things that you should probably avoid doing is that when you paint your image, and this is something I've heard from a, you know, from another artist that I think that kind of they they uh, I was in a workshop and they were talking about. It. I was like, okay, this is this is a good thing to think about, is that if you keep flipping your image back and forth, right, and painting on it and flipping and painting on it, and flipping and painting on it and flipping, is it kind of balances itself out compositionally, right? So what you want to tend to do, like, there's a natural flow. To the composition when you're painting it right now some of you guys like when you're doing stuff you'll just be like oh god you flip it and be like oh holy shit i drew that arm like totally wrong or you know oh my god the painting looks horrendous right that's a whole different thing so when that's happening that's that's fine right so what you want to do is you kind of like want to fix you want to you want to you know flip the image around and you want to like i don't know maybe want to do some stuff is like because we're like really early on in the paintings, just loose. We like even grab the warp tool, right? And start just, you know, like, I don't know, whatever you want to do, right? Just kind of moving things around a bit so they might kind of just, you know, feel a little bit better to you. And once you do that, you should then just transform, right? And flip it back. And keep working on it like that, right? So you can see how I kind of like changed it around a bit. Um, mm, you know, I don't know if it's better or worse. I kind of like some of the, I like sort of the angle that was happening over here with with some of these bits and pieces. So I might just sort of like erase, just, it's only a little thing, kind of like where the horizon line was kind of going there. Um, but I like some of the things that I did here. So, and let's just maybe like, you know, cut in, cut it off, whatever, and we can recrop and things like that. So um, one of the things you can do is flip. So flip the canvas. But what I'd say is just, you know, Try not to do it too much. Try not to end up with you don't know where you started. I, I used to do that all the time. I was like, I don't know which way around I started, right? Yeah, whatever. But I started to realize that as I probably got better at painting, I wanted to do things on purpose, right? And then when I flip things, it sometimes like breaks that thing that you were trying to do. So you just, that's all I'm saying, is just be careful of that. But it's a great little technique for kind of seeing mistakes, you know? And nowadays, what I sort of use it for is less for seeing mistakes, but more about like, you know, is the composition working the way they want it to and things like that. And, you know, like, I remember, you know, like even Mullins, you know, used to say like, and I think Tim was talking about this last week is even, you know, you should be, um, you should even be kind of like doing this sort of stuff where you can flip it like vertical, right? And the composition, the, what did I say then? The composition should still be really pleasing on the eye, right? Like the shapes and the proportion of things and how you're designing stuff, that should kind of work any way you're kind of flipping things around. You can see here, it's like, oh, wow, that's cool. Like, you know, this upside down floating 
castle in the water or something. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> and sometimes you, sometimes like with the painting, I just feel like, I don't know what I'm doing here, and I was like flipping around until like I see kind of things that I like. But um, you know, tend to tend to not do that too much. And you know, like I said, I think you know as you start getting, you know, we can zoom in a little bit so you guys can maybe see see how things are looking, but. Yeah, as as you get better with things, you get more confident about kind of what you're doing and the the purpose as to why you're doing those things. And like I said, I know like when you're starting out, sometimes you know it's it's a bit more by accident, right? But that's okay. Just you know, start hearing some of these things, start kind of knowing you know what's what's generally going on, and you know we can you can work from there for sure. And we want to keep some of these nice kind of strokes in here. That's, you know, this brush is great. Get some of that, like, texture in. Awesome. And you can see, like, as we go through, you can start to, you know, decide, you know, how how complex, how simplistic you want, you know, some areas to be. How much you want to get in there with the brush and do things, you know, do you want to start adding some photo textures and things like that? Should we do some of that? Do you guys want to see how we can add some of those things in? Deep sea god, where is it? I don't know. It's out there, Rick. Leave me alone. I'm painting castles. <laughs> and you know your your hand and your eye will get better at like kind of indicating those things. So it's pretty subtle, but just trying to work on like what this shape is doing here, right? And how that can kind of work. All right, just starting to noodle details and things here, aren't I? All right. Well, let's let's add in like a couple little photo textures and stuff here. I always like to just kind of work on these shapes. Don't have them too kind of I'll call them frumpy, frumpy shapes where we're gonna have you know these shapes really working within our composition. Right, and then we want to, like here, we want to start getting these. We want these shapes to feel a bit more 3D, right? Like they're describing that surface. Probably don't want them too pink in there, but. So I'm just holding Alt. A caravan, yeah, yep. <laughs> we could add that in. Sure. All right. Let's grab some of this stuff. Let's grab some of the reference that we've been painting with, or looking at while we're painting, and kind of like paste that in. And what we should find is that you know, if you're doing it right, <laughs> it should kind of match pretty well. So, hoping, hoping that 
this is going to kind of make now I think that I kind of painted it a bit sort of more like that right all right and then what I'm going to do is just go through the layer settings so um, I'm essentially going through this panel over here right and the way I can do that without going through each one of those is just sh if I've got the move tool so V V for Victor move <laughs> move tool select it I just hold shift plus and shift plus will start cycling through those layers and yeah basically use a combination of lighten and and darken to kind of get some of these you know these results happening here and and then what I do is I start like just erasing out right so I'm just yeah and then we can kind of like just fade it in you know ever so slightly and be like you know what details do we want and what do we want to keep right and let's even go through like I'm just gonna go through some more layer settings like maybe that's Just going to keep going through. There's some cool bits. There's some bits that work. There's some bits that don't work. <laughs> so one one person says, "At what point is this cheating, so to speak?" Well, you know. What what's yeah a good way to think of this is we're just we're kind of just using this as a bit of a um, we're just using elements right it's not like we're using all all of the pieces and like I mean I just spent the last hour painting <laughs> painting it in right so after a while you kind of back yourself that you know if you didn't have this you could paint those bits and pieces in right just just yourself so this is just another tool that you can use to just really help. You know describe some of these elements that you want in here all right so a lot of and the thing for a lot of like students or people starting out is that a lot of the things that you see online where it's like really cool and you're just like i could never ever paint something like that in a million years right well probably neither could the artists that did it <laughs> they're using lots of different tools to you know to create these images all right so it's just like that. It's just another tool, right? It's a tool to create these things. In actual fact, I kind of like the painting where it was at, just with the just with the painting bit. So, one thing I could do here is like maybe I actually want some of this a little bit more graphic. So let's go filter, uh, filter gallery, right? And let's try like kind of this this cutout, and I'm just gonna. I think if I do that, it's gonna be. We still need it kind of detailed. <clears throat> uh, all right, what does this do? Oh, do you think I know this the amount of times I do this? All right, let's try something like that. Go, okay, right, that's kind of cool. That's well, got some interesting stuff going on, right? In some areas. Now, one of the things I've done here is like, so you've got to always. This is that thing where you're like, oh, okay, well, you know, we can use the photos, but remember, it's like you've got to, you've got to control it, right? So you've got to think about. There's some elements that I kind of painted in here, right? That I really liked in terms of, you know, some of these bits here really pushing your eye into the composition, right? So I might want to kind of keep those, and there's some bits here where it's kind of, it's pretty cool. And I really like this, some of these areas here for the sense of scale that these were giving. So let's kind of do that. All 
let's go filter, filter gallery, and just kind of try that again. No, maybe there's some good stuff going on here. Let's go command J. Right, so that's that's got some cool stuff going on. And what I do is I kind of go in and keep painting some of these things out. Right, now, <clears throat> the other thing is, once again, I had some of this going on here, which I think really makes it, this stuff here really makes it feel like we're looking down on that. On this kind of surface so I'm going to paste some of this in here and kind of get it happening like over here so but with this one let's make some selections right because we just want this that image to kind of only happen in these areas here. So something like that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go Command Shift C, Command V. It's just going to paste this bit right on top of itself. And then what I can do is I can grab this photo here and in between the layers I can hold Alt. So basically if I move in between the layers nothing's happening. If I hold Alt it's going to create a clipping mask. And when I do that, see how the image kind of like go, whoop, I'm moving the wrong way around. See how this image actually goes within that space there. Whoa, how cool is that? So, right, and then we can just really get some like really cool forms and stuff going on there. Let's go through the layer settings and just see if anything's going to like kind of, you know, take nicely in there. There's some kind of cool stuff. Let's go Command J and clip it in again so hold alt in between the layers command minus and then we're just going to like really tone the opacity down of this bit all right and then we just go through the layers and we just kind of like paint out some of the bits we don't want and we're going to have to do some you know kind of we're going to make sure some of the colors working and, and things like that i'm just going to tone this down Maybe with this one I could go cut out. Let's try cut out with this one too. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. <clears throat> All right, and then the other thing is I was just going to work on some of those like background mountains a little bit. Right, which are these kind of ones up here. You can see we can they're gonna really indicate some nice form on here. We're just gonna go through and probably just have it on like you know that kind of like darken or light and layer. And the the thing is though, you know, th this only really works nicely when you have that good base of painting underneath. So what I want to do is I don't want to have those dark bits up the top. All right, so so the difference is between when you're starting out and more experience is like I'm actually painting those forms above, you know, before I'm kind of adding some of this photo in. And then what happens is you just get this nice mix, right? A really cool like mix of stuff. So and then what you can do is like really zoom in right and and be painting and just kind of like you know paint these details out we've got like a little pathway we can get the, the caravan on here you know <laughs> right whatever this is going to be going to be doing toning some of it down obviously that will need 
Need more. Yeah, so I think we're going to finish up fairly soon, guys, because I think this is, you know, this is head along to a, you know, a good point and hopefully is giving you guys some little ideas for how you could do this stuff or giving it a go. It's a bit of practice. It's, you know, once again, we see, you know, Tim and I doing this stuff. It always looks really easy, right? And you're just like, oh, cool. Just paint the thing, add the bits, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, you've all probably heard of Bob Ross, right? And this is paint a little tree and his little friend, you know, right? It seems so easy, <laughs> but it, it does, you know, it definitely takes a lot of practice. All right. So the only way you get better at this stuff is just by doing it over and over and over again. Once you get comfortable at it, it's awesome, right? And we can just, yeah, just keep going through, keep painting these things out, having some of those nice, you know, soft edges and hard edges and, you know, adding some nice variety. And you can see, like, when I zoom in, there's some stuff that's a bit kind of, like, janky around the edges and things. So we need to, like, you know, go through the painting and work out, like, you know, what's a hard edge, what's a soft edge, you know, all those types of, you know, cool things that make the painting work really nicely there's some more you know kind of like bridges so just cutting in some negative shapes and things like that <laughs> like down here it might be nice to just kind of like soften some of this the other thing that we can do is because I'm starting to be like adding a few of these photos in which kind of have slightly different colors and tones and things is that just above here I can do a um, like a, we can let's do a curves adjustment layer right and in curves I can then choose red green and blue right and we can start to just you know I kind of think of it as like sort of pulling colors out, you know, or adding colors in, right? We can kind of just kind of get the colors to shift around a bit. And you can see how we can just kind of like pull those things together just a little bit more, you know, and whatever bits are like happening from some of the photos that I was adding in that you know I, I do or don't like I can just you know paint some of those things out right but it all relies on that, that understanding of the the structure that you're you know kind of painting with right let's not zoom in too far <laughs> see all the gross bits And the more I kind of like go back in here and, and work in the paint, right, then the more it's going to like start having that, you know, nice paint feeling again. And we just, you know, have a combination. You can even start thinking about how some of these rocks are kind of maybe working their way down here trying to create like a bit of a visual language all right any last questions guys Noodling, noodling, noodling. <laughs> All 
And sometimes I'll just be like, oh, I kind of just like the strokes of the paint in that area there. So just, you know, paint out all the bits that you had, that you've added in. You know, they're helping in other areas, but not some. And, you know, you just keep, like it's a, it's a, it's a process. But, you know, it's pretty fun. I could even, you know, start adding in clouds. I think another thing, just quickly what I'll do is just add an airbrush here. Well, not like that. Let's just make a selection here. Maybe 20% opacity. And sometimes I like to kind of select um, colors off the palette. And just brush them over the painting a bit. Just kind of like tie them together. Let's do a let's just do a soft light layer. Just pulling things together a little bit. Let's just do a kind of in this area here. Let's do a feathered selection. I'm gonna make it like maybe 50. Command Shift C, Command V, I'm going to go Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast, and just push a bit more contrast into this area here, which is kind of like becoming our nice little focal point. All right. So now I've been doing some of these things. Let's just go into Selective Color. Let's go into Blacks. I just push and pull some of these. Let's go into neutrals. Right, I kind of like a, a desaturated some things here a little bit, but what I want to do now is I just want to quickly do I'm going to do like a I'm going to do a feathered selection again, kind of like in this area here. All right, let's make it maybe a hundred. Command uh, Command Shift C Command V. It's going to paste all that and go image adjustments hue saturation, and our eyes attracted to areas of contrast and areas of saturation. So let's just kind of like ramp oh this took a little while to happen there let's kind of like just ramp that up and see how we we kind of it's very subtle right but just pulling areas of saturation into kind of the the focal point and that's just going to kind of like yeah draw your eye into that into that section there sneaky little sneaky little artist things you do to trick people just trick people Please look here, sir. Okay. Let's a few little more. A few little strokes here, just getting a little bit of color variation to some of these sections. It's going to be like mush kind of down in this area here, so we we'll probably need to to solve that at some point in time, but probably not right now. <laughs> You know, and a lot of things now are just kind of like working out edges and things.
always working on the different brush sizes as well. So I'm always I'm using the bracket keys, square bracket keys. Um, so someone is asking if I, you know, need to think about the uh, the sort of environment that the character's in. I mean, you know, yes and no. You know, kind of later on, yeah, like when you're getting really experienced with those things. But for right now, you know, more like I don't know if I don't know if you in particular were watching the streams with Tim, but you know, he was talking about thinking about the personality. You know, so sometimes the environment will affect. You know the the personality of the character like as in do they live in a marshland or they do they live in a, a desert you know right so those types of things they're the things to think about not necessarily what exactly kind of looks like and stuff but more of like how you know um could the environment that i'm painting um you know influence that character right like in a sort of form follows function type of way um yeah does that make sense Right, so yeah, so because Tim's not here, I can just paint environments all the, all the time. It's amazing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> all of the secrets. I oh, was showing all of the secrets. You can see as I like go in and keep refining, it's like how, you know, we can just keep doing this, right? <laughs> Create a little pass, little trees. Oh, so much fun. Little stroke, you know, sections. Does this bit sit above that one? Or what's happening, you know? All right. But all of those things are kind of like, Remember, these are all things that you're thinking about in your head, and the more you can think about those, like kind of the, the the structures of things, then the easier this stuff kind of becomes, right? And it's all just that. A lot of it is all just the the practice, and and it becoming more like you know walking, riding a bike, right? And then you can start then you can start introducing new things, new techniques, new ways of thinking about stuff. And all of that, those things build up to become, you know, for you becoming really good, really good artists. Making a castle of little dibbly dobbly shapes. <laughs> But it's you know it's mostly just making sure you control those values, thinking about you know what the light's doing, and it's amazing how like realistic you can get these things to look, even just through yeah you know, little simple painting techniques. And obviously, even with the castle, we could add you know we could add uh, photos and things you know on top of that. Obviously, very subtly because it's in the background, but we could we could do some of those things for sure. Mm. All right, so all right, there we go, guys. So I think we're going to call that done. All right, and um, and yeah, once again, sorry Tim couldn't be here. Thought I'd just give you guys a bit more of a demo with some techniques. Um, hope that will help. If you have any questions during the week you know please post them in the in the uh in the twitch stream event on facebook all right and keep getting those you know pieces of art in for review and and discussion topics things you'd like us to talk about things like that all right but um yeah awesome guys um really awesome to chat with you tonight and hopefully we'll see you around next week okay bye